everyone, this is Holly. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created my clamshell technique entry for this month's Soap Challenge Club. The Soap Challenge Club is hosted by Amy Warden and has a new challenge each month. It's such a great way to learn new soap making skills whether you're a beginner or advanced soap maker. So be sure to check out the link below to the Soap Challenge Club website where you'll find information on current challenges and how to purchase access to all the past tutorials. Our guest instructor this month was Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks. If you haven't already seen Terry's soap making videos, be sure to check out her YouTube channel. Terry's videos are always very informative and she provides an incredible amount of detail. It's also just fun to see how she makes her beautiful soaps. In the description box below this video, you'll find links to both Tree Marie Soapworks and the Soap Challenge Club. My first step was to get the colorants ready. I added a little sunflower oil to 1 quarter teaspoon green oxide and mixed until it was completely smooth. I'll explain how I use each one of these later when I actually color the soap. I next measured out about 1 teaspoon of orange eyelac clay and added just enough water for the clay to be fluid. I almost always hydrate my clays just so they're easier to incorporate into the soap without too much blending. For my white color, I measured out 1 teaspoon of titanium dioxide and added enough water so the powder dissolved completely. I normally use a white kale and clay to make soaps a little lighter in color. However, for this soap, I really wanted a strong contrast between the light and dark colors to help the clamshell design stand out as much as possible. For my blue colorant, I mixed 1 quarter teaspoon indigo powder with 2 teaspoons of sunflower oil. This indigo is very pigmented, so it doesn't take much at all to create a blue color in soap. Finally, to help me darken some of the other colors a bit, I prepared some activated charcoal. I measured out about 2 teaspoons and mixed that with 1 tablespoon of sunflower oil. The next step was to actually make the soap. Before adding the lye to the oils, I poured my fragrance in first. Since I was using peppermint essential oil, I wasn't worried about it causing any kind of acceleration or problems with the soap. You can also add it later if you like. I wanted to mention that my recipe was based on the one that Terry provided in the tutorial. Since this isn't mine to share, I won't be including it below. However, if you are interested in Terry's recipe, the tutorial will be available for purchase on the Soap Challenge Club website as soon as this current challenge concludes. For this technique, I wanted to stop blending when I reached emulsion, so I kept checking the stick blender shaft for any signs of oil beading or separation. Even though the batter was quite thin at this point, it looked very smooth and uniform, so I stopped blending. I knew I still had a lot of stirring to do, and I could also blend more later. In order to divide the soap and have enough for each color, I first weighed the entire batch and then subtracted the bowl weight. This gave me the total weight of the soap. I then used that number to measure out half for the white color, and the remaining batter was split into three equal parts. To make the dark blue soap, I used a combination of the indigo and charcoal I prepared earlier. To one cup of soap, I added a half teaspoon of the indigo oil and about a quarter teaspoon of the charcoal. The next color I wanted to create was a dark forest green. I used the same amounts of indigo and charcoal as I did for the blue soap. Then I added drops of green oxide until I was satisfied with the color. I also wanted a dark orange colored soap. 
I used one teaspoon of the orange eyelac clay and then just a few drops of charcoal to help darken the color. Finally, to color the white soap, I used all of the titanium dioxide I mixed up earlier. This amounted to about one third teaspoon per cup of soap. I continued to stir the soaps and watch how they traced for another 10 minutes or so. When the soap started to leave a very thin trace on top of itself, I was ready to start the pour. I poured each color into a separate container along with the white, attempting to keep the amounts even. I elevated the back of the mold about an inch using some thick acrylic pieces from one of my slab mold dividers. Before I start the pour, I wanted to mention a few things I did for this technique. You'll probably notice that I place the spouts of the containers in the same three spots each time, and then gently shake them back and forth as I pour the soap. I'm also counting to nine to try and pour the same amount of soap each time. At this point, I decided to remove one of the spacers to lower the mold so the soap continues to flow towards the back and not up and over the top of itself. You'll see me do this again later until all the spacers have been removed and I'll even add spacers to the front as the soap gets thicker. I decided to use the CPOP method with this soap. CPOP stands for Cold Process Oven Process. This method uses the warmth of the oven to help ensure the soap goes through gel phase. So I preheated my oven to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the lowest temperature it will go. When I was finished, I turned the oven off, covered the soap, and then placed it in the warmed oven. I also left the oven light on for about four more hours to help hold the warm temperature. The next morning, I took the soap out of the oven and left it covered on the counter. By that afternoon, it was ready to unmold and cut.
made several batches for this challenge and thought I would include those here. These were poured at a very thin trace, which caused the colors to look a bit muddy. And these were poured when the trace was a bit thicker, but still so thin that the feathering really didn't stand out as much. I really like how they turned out though. And this last batch was poured at a medium thick trace. Thank you so much for watching. I know how valuable your time is and I really appreciate you choosing to spend it here. I hope you come back to see more of my videos and be sure to check out both Terry's channel and the Soap Challenge Club.